thank you so much everyone for coming. I'm very excited to be here. It's my first PG Day Paris and I'm really looking forward to this uh, wonderful event. Um, this talk is about PostgreSQL community and some things that I've learned um, since I started to get some exposure to the community and started working with uh, Data Egrid. So a few words about the company, about myself as well. Um, we are Data Egrid, so we have clients worldwide that we support with everything that has to do with Postgres. We provide migrations and support them during um, the migration process, uh, as well as optimization of, of their databases. We run trainings. Uh, we also provide audits uh, for clients that uh, need support and they have their own team, but sometimes they need like an extra pair of hands. Um, and Along the lines of um, community, we are quite deeply involved in the community. And with that in mind, with our training and experience, etc., we often run webinars and, and trainings and things like that. So there will be this webinar in April who is that's run by Stefan, um, focusing on backups. Maybe some of you would be interested or maybe some of your colleagues might be interested in that as well. Um, few words about me. So I come from a little bit of a diverse background. I worked in different industries and I work in science, a bit in pharma and then now in databases. But across all of those, I've been um, mainly focusing on communications and marketing and things like that. Within Postgres community, I've been involved in um, also different aspects. I'm currently a chair of PGUS user group co committee and um, also on the funds group, as well as supporting some European aspects of the community uh, with Postgres Europe, uh, FOSDEM and uh, conferences. So why this presentation, how it came about? Um, when I first joined the community, there were few things that were not necessarily very clear to me. It was a bit different from my previous sort of setups uh, and, and roles uh, that I worked at, it reminded me a little bit of academia, but um, in a sense, it took me a while to figure out certain things and how things work, why, like what, what sort of com committees there are out there, how they work and interlinked together and so on. So it took me a while to figure that out. And I must say there are certain things that are still not 100% clear to me. And I decided to put all those things together just to make sure that I have everything in, in one place. So in a sense, this presentation is for myself as well, but also for anybody who comes to Postgres uh, as a newcomer and they want to figure things out as I needed to. And hopefully it will help them also to inspire them how to contribute and be a part of this community. Uh, just a little disclaimer, so all the information here is things that I found on the website, on postgresql.org site, on the wiki page. There are some resources that are uh, not necessarily on those two places, but they just Googleable, so I found them there. So there's some information might be incorrect, but I hope it is. Uh, if you have any comments, etc., please do reach out to me and I can make some fixtures and additions and things like that because this is like an evolving uh, presentation. Um, and another thing to mention, so this presentation will, will be available after this talk. It has a lot of links that you can follow, so you can take pictures, of course, but it would I would be really happy if you can actually use it. So download it and just click around and discover it for yourself. So when we talk about Postgres, um, there are two kind of aspects that we think about. There's a database and the description of what it is is pretty clear. It's on the website and it's sort of set. Uh, when we talk about community, it becomes a little bit more complex. So there are all these different uh, parts of the community, different committees, core team, organizers, event organizers, uh, contributors, people who um, run commit fast and, and so on. So it's sort of getting a bit more complex in a sense. But um, what's important to remember is that 
community and database uh, is basically the same thing. Essentially, without community, we wouldn't have uh, Postgres. And I might quote my uh, friend Stephanie here that PostgreSQL doesn't have a community, it is a community. And I would strongly agree with that. So I'll start from a few sort of basic things. You might know those already. There are different PostgreSQL entities. Um, here, just to name uh, a few sort of relevant ones for, this, for the sake of this uh, event. The PostgreSQL Europe, PGUS, there's Slonic Events Canada that's been created to support the conference in Vancouver. And um, there's also in, in France, there is association PostgreSQL France. Um, and just, I will dive a bit deep, deeper into each one of those. So United States Postgres Association, uh, the way it's sort of built, there is a board, but there are also different committees and each committee responsible for uh, different aspects of the community. So there's user group committee, there's conference committee, and um, you can also, it also has membership, you can become a member of the association, um, which provides you an opportunity to be on the board. You can also participate in elections, and um, also it's just supporting uh, the community in general. There is PostgreSQL Europe. It's an um, organization that um, organizes different events, like this one, for example. PGCon for you is a big one. It's going to be in Athens later in fall this year. Um, it's also uh, making sure that it uh, represents PostgreSQL at uh, other conferences that are not necessarily Postgres focused, like FOSDEM, um, and it organizes other different events within Europe. The main difference between PostgreSQL Europe and the US is um, the PostgreSQL Europe has a restriction to the geography of Europe when it comes to supporting different activities versus the PGUS doesn't. Um, here in France, there is a PostgreSQL France. Uh, it's actually been founded in 2005, so it's earlier than uh, PGU. And this sort of structure of it, um, unsurprisingly, is pretty similar. So you have the board and also you have membership. There's also um, an intercompany working group that work together and you, you can, um, your company can, can join that to be more like, active within the community, and there is membership as well. Uh, there are different user groups out there. Uh, there are two, uh, one in Lille and one in Lyon, and from what I understood that there are another two that used to be active, one in Paris and one in Toulouse, so if, if you would be interested in supporting those and, and make them a bit more active again, you can reach out to organizers and I will be happy to direct you um, and guide you how you can do that. In addition to that, you have funds group, core team, and code of conduct committee. Um, funds group manages sort of, of the financial aspect of Postgres, and if there are different new initiatives, it needs to go through funds group to get the budget approved and so on. There is a core team that often seen as a core um, main body that makes main decisions, but it's not necessarily so because it's really guided from other different aspects of the uh, groups of within the community to make those decisions. And Code of Conduct Committee, um, as you heard, that is basically Postgres has Code of Conduct and it needs to be, uh, all the events within Postgres need to be compliant with the code of, code of Conduct. The main goal of that is to make it basically open to anyone and to make people feel comfortable within the community and to, to make it a safe space. There are a few things that you can find online with regards to identity. This is more, I guess, for people like in marketing that want to use Postgres logos and things like that. Uh, but also if you use Postgres logo within your um, materials, slides, etc., it's also something that you should really look into and it's on the website, all the information. Um, with regards to license, uh, it's very short and to the point. Um, and the main thing to remember with regards to license is license that it's fork friendly, but um, whatever you do uh, with the code, once you download and make any changes, University of California is not responsible. But you can 
download it, make changes, create it as a new product, as a fork, and um, sell it. So um, a few things that I, so when I was thinking about how one can contribute to the community, there are different aspects. Um, and you really need to understand where you want to get. So it kind of reminded me of this scene of Alice in Wonderland, where she, talk, she talks to Cheshire Cat and asks where she should go. And uh, he says it depends a good deal where you want to get to. And if you don't really care, then it doesn't matter which way you go. So hopefully this will give you some uh, key ideas where you can potentially go and contribute and, and dig a bit dig deeper. Um, let's see with the first I'll talk a bit about local user groups. Um, those are really important for the health of PostgreSQL. They encourage new users to come and, and join Postgres and um, provide an opportunity for networking, for brainstorming new ideas, uh, discuss potential new patches, um, and so on. When I heard Pug at first, um, I wasn't sure what it's referring to, but it it's not a pug, it's actually a Postgres user group, but they often call as such. Um, there are two locations where you can take a look and see all the different user groups out there. Uh, one is on postgresql.org site, and another one is on meetup.com. Um, however, not all user groups necessarily would be on either of those places, so there is always a chance that there is a group, it just it's not there but at least it will give you an idea whether in your location you have a group that you can join. Uh, and if not, and you would want to organize uh, a group, you can do that. There is no need for you to get approval from somebody or make it official, etc. You just uh, go ahead and you organize it. Um, if you need support with that, you can always reach out to the boards and uh, they will be able to help you and redirect you. Um, there are a few sort of key points in this presentation uh, to give you an idea of how to organize it. There is a page on Wiki which is um, very helpful, I find. It has a lot of information um, with regards to how to go about finding venue, finding speakers, and, and the process of making first initial announcements, and then how to follow up on those to keep your event running. Um, so a thing that I will note is this, there is a speaker bureau. It's a page on Wiki where different speakers that give often talks at Postgres events, they list their name if they would be happy to be contacted. And uh, you can go there, take a look, and if you would like one of those people listed to have um, as a speaker at your event, you can reach out, there is an email there, and uh, we will connect you. With regards to announcements, there are different ideas where you can announce your initial uh, meetup. And uh, the one thing to remember is that if it's your initial meetup, the first one, obviously you need to announce it everywhere. On all platforms you can think about your own ones. If you have a sponsor, ask them to help you as well. Uh, different PostgreSQL channels like Slack, uh, there are Telegram uh, channels and so on. If it's an event that is running currently and um, after about first, second one, it's sort of already um, so-called established event, you wouldn't want necessarily to spam all of those platforms. So you would have one channel, for example, meetup.com is quite popular one to have, and then you just make some announcements uh, there and maybe on your personal channels as well. A um, few tips here about running a successful meetup, uh, but the key to remember is to be, to persevere. It might be at the beginning very frustrating if you don't have many people, etc. but once you run it on a regular basis at the same venue and so on, you will have more people coming. Um, and again, if you need any support with logistics, uh, contracts, finances, finding speakers, venues, etc., you can reach out to the boards and um, discuss it with them and they will be able to help. Um, another thing to mention is that if you need uh, support, especially from the board, and even if you don't, it is a good idea and it's like a common thing um, to have your event recognized, uh, your meetup recognized. Uh, there are guides on the website as well. 
that tell you how it can be, uh, how it can comply with the rules. And um, if you are here already at the conference and you have this idea of running a local user, gr user group, I would suggest to talk to organizers of this event, to talk to participants. You might be able to find somebody who, with whom you can organize the event together with. Um, and organizers, organizers will give you some pointers of what you need to be wary of if you're organizing an event. Now, with regards to wider community, Postgres is a global, um, I would say, movement. So sometimes you would be very interested to hear and to understand like who those people are, because it it's all sounds a bit abstract. Um, so there are, there are a few places where you can go to and just to discover who the people behind Postgres are. There are some interviews that Andreas Scherbaum conducts um, online and you can find them on PostgreSQL Live. Um, and there's also Chess Club since recently, so you might be able to join that. Um, and also you can just uh, go to different events that you can find also on the website um, and just see for, for yourself and meet those people there. Um, a thing that you remember when you go to the postgresql.org and go to the events page, uh, there are different events listed there and some of them would have that sort of gold coin. Those are community recognized events. Um, the other ones, they aren't uh, recognized, but the main difference is that the recognized events, they normally run by several different companies. They have different organizers and um, uh, those who are not recognized, they run by company. Um, who has their own products or services and they run those events. I, this is not to say that one is better than the other. I think it's mainly um, just to understand that there are different sort of um, considerations at play and when you go there, you are aware of that. If you want to organize a PGD or PGConf, um, pretty much all the things that I said about Meetup apply here as well. And there's a very good talk that was um, took place at PGEU end of last year uh, by Henrietta and Teresa, and I would strongly recommend watching that because it has a lot of different ideas and is basically based on their experience of running PG days. And I think that's um, very useful. Um, also here, if it's a bigger event, it still needs to be community recognized. Once it's recognized, it will get support from boards and, and, and so on. Uh, if you like events and you would like to go and visit and not to miss out, there are two tools that uh, I find very useful, and I personally use both of them, for not missing any deadlines and um, if you want to submit talks and so on, uh, not to miss call for papers. And moving on swiftly, uh, we go to learning. So if you want to learn about Postgres, uh, there are sort of two paths that you can take. One is when you decide to do it on your own, and another one is to take courses. If you discover it for yourself, then you have uh, different resources, like PostgreSQL documentation. Um, you also have Planet Postgres. Um, PostgreSQL documentation obviously is very extensive and uh, it really has all the answers you could possibly have. Um, but then it's also, also good sometimes to sort of keep up to date with regards to recent developments and things like that. And for that I would recommend subscribing to Planet Postgres. It's basically a blog aggregator and different companies who write blogs, they normally, normally um, feed their blogs onto Planet and some individual contribution contributors as well, they have their own blogs and also fit into Planet. So you will get basically get updates um, and you will see all the recent blog posts that came out, which is helpful. Then we have Postgres Weekly, um, which is also quite nice new newsletter um, that you would receive on a weekly basis. And that sort of has even smaller subset of popular blog posts and uh, things that happening within the community uh, listed. 
There are also different li mailing lists that you can subscribe to. Mailing lists, it's like part of a culture, I would say, of Postgres. And um, it's something that's worth also exploring. I will talk about them a bit later as well, uh, but it's something to consider. There are also a bunch of different uh, sort of Googleable uh, learning resources. I listed here a few uh, very popular ones based on some of our DBA suggestions and some things that I heard from other people. So hopefully this will be useful to you as well. And here are some books uh, that are also very popular and I would recommend looking into those as well. If you decide to go uh, and take a course, uh, there are different vendors that offer courses on Postgres. Uh, there are some online courses as well. Uh, one of the things that is worth mentioning, because it sometimes occasionally comes up in the mailing list discussions and so on, that there isn't official Postgres certification. So if you do a course and you receive a certificate, it's going to be a certificate from that particular vendor that runs the course but there isn't a one official sort of unified Postgres uh, certification. Now, if you already started learning Postgres and you have some issues or you want a free advice um, and you want to reach out, there are different places where you can go to and you can ask your question and normally people would respond pretty quickly. Um, there's a Telegram channel, so I listed also a few Facebook groups. There is Postgres Slack, which is also quite popular. And um, there are also mailing lists. So with regards to mailing lists, as I said, um, it's part of Postgres culture to communicate within mailing lists. There are each mailing list has a different topic. And uh, the way it works, you basically follow this link. Um, if, you don't, if you don't have a community account, it will take you to registration page. Once you have the community account, you will get um, a list of different mailing lists. And you just choose it based on the topic that you're interested in, and um, you follow those. Um, when communicating on mailing lists, it's important to remember that those are lists that multiple and by multiple, I mean a lot of people subscribe to. So if you send an email to that list, everybody will receive it. So you have to be mindful of that. Um, you also have to be mindful of the fact that uh, people who respond to your questions, they, this is not their sort of key job. They do it as a, a support to the community. So try to provide all the context that you can provide if you have a spe specific issue, specific problem, uh, not to post to not to post screenshots on the, like social media or mailing lists as well. Um, it would be just easier to correct the code once you sort of copy pasted it rather than took a screenshot. Um, and just to be tactful and not to be rude and not to expect uh, immediate reply. Once again, those people that answering um, your email might be somewhere on the beach and they do it just you know between the runs to the sea <laughs> and they might be. Uh, taking some time for them to respond. If you are here in PG Day Paris and you have a technical question, obviously you're surrounded by people that know different aspects of Postgres and they work in uh, different ways with Postgres. So you might be able to find an answer to your question right here. So that's another thing um, to keep in mind. Now, if you run out of options and you need professional support um, and you're struggling, um, there are on the website on postgresql.org there is a list of different vendors that provide support um, and there are also PostgreSQL sponsors that you can look into. PostgreSQL sponsors, those are companies that, that are uh, deeply involved within the community and uh, they often have people who actually develop Postgres so you have sort of high level of professionalism there. Um, um, and you can just reach out to them and they will be able to help. Now, a few words about hacking in Postgres. So, one of the questions that uh, we often asked, uh, especially when our clients come from the commercial databases, is whether in Postgres, there is a specific roadmap and a list of specific uh, features that are sort of lined up in the pipeline. 
Um, the simple answer is no. There is no official formal roadmap and the developers are encouraged to work on patches that are they are interested in. Um, spe if specific company is interested in a patch and they have people that want to work on it, obviously they can uh, try and work on it as well. But another thing to remember that everything that goes into Postgres goes through the very sort of scrutinizing process of review. Uh, during commit fast, so not everything that you want to go in will go in. Um, but if you are interested in this, I would suggest subscribing to PG, uh, SQL Hackers mailing list. This is where all the communication with regards to commit fast and uh, patch submission is happening. And at first, I would say just to listen and observe how people communicate, what sort of questions out there, and um, just to follow the process of patch submission and then once you're ready you can maybe propose uh, a new idea and and get some feedback uh, once again go to events talk to people discuss this idea with them and um, then you will be able to step by step uh, go into process of submitting your patch so commit first um, this is just like a general overview of the flow um, it's, it has five com commit fests during the year, after which there is a feature freeze in April, which means that basically all the other patches um, will um, enter the next release, not, not this one. And after feature freeze and uh, the review, etc., there is a bitter relief and the release candidate, and in roughly in September time, towards end of September, there is a major release coming. And um, yeah, uh, and with regards to commit fast, uh, different roles, you have commit fast manager, who basically a manager, so he manages the whole process, making sure that sort of he's, he's herding all those uh, patches coming in. There are contributors that are developers that want to submit their patches, and there are committers, uh, and this is actually a very limited group of people who can um, push, it, uh, pu pu push patches into a Git repository, and you can find a bit more information about that online. And a um, few additional words to say about uh, bug reporting. If you are experiencing uh, specific issues, etc., cetera, um, it's a go good idea to submit uh, a bug report. Um, there are instructions and guidelines on the website of, of how to do that. If you do work with a vendor like ourselves, for example, uh, normally you would have people who know how to submit uh, a bug report and they will be, be able to assist you on that. If you want to read a bit more about um, hacking, I listed here a few um, blogs and uh, videos that you could watch and just get familiar with the process. Another aspect is, and we, we're getting there, <laughs> and I know it's long, um, is if you're looking for a job or you're a recruiter and you're looking for people in Postgres, um, I listed here a few places where you could, could do that. On Slack there is a specific channel, where people advertise new jobs uh, and so on. Also, it's a good idea to subscribe to mailing lists. And um, if you are looking for a job, is you can go to the website of different conferences, like this one, for example, go to sponsors, and majority of the sponsors normally looking for staff. So you can take a look there and then follow their channels for specifics. Um, and if you hear at PG Day Paris, obviously you can talk to people around you. It's a small conference. It will allow you to also get familiar with different um, companies that might recruit as well. Now, with regards to recognition, once you do all these things for the community, what do you actually um, get and why you should do it? So if you are a contributor and you um, took part in the commit fast process, for example, if you reviewed um, patches and things like that, or if you uh, committed uh, new patches, there are this type of coins that uh, Postgres would send you, and they are version specific and they look quite cute. So I think at least for that, it's definitely worth while considering contributing. 
Um, with regards to company sponsorships, there are three types of sponsorships out there. There's contributing sponsors, financial sponsors, and server sponsors. So if you work for a company and you would like the company to get um, recognized, these are the three sort of paths that your company can take. And uh, these are also listed on the website. And I think their definitions are sort of um, self-explanatory. So contributing sponsors, th these are companies that normally um, have their staff um, involved in the community and they help run these kind of events. They help um, with commit fests, developing uh, new features, etc. And basically they just say, they just uh, give their staff time to do all those things. Financial sponsors, uh, these are sponsors that uh, donate money to, to support the project. And server sponsors, they provide one or more servers um, and provide hosting for the project. And on the website looks roughly like this. So, with all those different options, and I know there are several also talks that talk about uh, how to contribute, and you can find them online as well. The question remains, why would you actually do it? Um, I'd say it's a combination of different things. First of all, if you are using Postgres and you want to continue using it, it's something that uh, you really need to consider doing. So if you are contributing and you want for Postgres to thrive for years to come, then uh, obviously it needs all support uh, out there. Um, it also gives you sort of control of uh, the product that, that you use in a sense that you will be able to understand how it works, understand the internals. Um, you will understand the whole process of, uh, as I was saying about commit fest and things like that. So it's, it's uh, everything is pretty transparent. You just need to go there and proactively um, take a look and, and get interested in it. Also, it, it will allow to grow professionally, I would say, because it will expand your network. Uh, it will help you to try out some skills that you maybe in other databases wouldn't be able to use. Um, and also, just it, it will give you a feeling that you are a part of something bigger and um, something you know that you can think about when, when you older and, I don't know, thinking about your life and, you know, <laughs> get philosophical, sort of, you will feel that you achieved something super important and being part of something really great. Um, and with that, I do hope that uh, you will think about all those different options and will consider how to become an active member of this community. And with that, I would like to thank all the wonderful people that helped me to put this together and um, for any questions I'm here no. uh, thank you for the fantastic slide deck uh, I have one question to yourself and also to the room so me and Andrea um, are starting user groups in Spain in Barcelona and Madrid and I'm really hoping for some advice and help. We have already reached out to the board and we're going to be starting this this year. Um, but we're a little bit unsure of all the steps. So I will be reading your slides carefully. Uh, you, um, you, know, you highlighted quite a lot. It's more the advocacy, the swag. I mean, we know what to do. We need to find a room, a sponsor, uh, and uh, get it on a meetup. But we, we're looking for advice and help. So there's a lot of good content. But if anyone wants to come up and speak to us afterwards and give us hints and advice and encouragement, that would be very much appreciated. Yeah, that, uh, well, you can. No? No. I, uh, <laughs> I don't have much to add, but I think like if somebody wants to talk to you after this, that would be great. I think it's highly encouraged, and uh, I'm sure board will be able to help with some things, but uh, if there are people that you know would be interested, Yeah, and you can also, I would recommend to watch um, the Teresa and um, uh, Henrietta and the, yeah, uh, conference because it was not user group, it was more PG day, but they were really, really good tips. 
I think in general it would, it's, it's good to have more than one organizer because I think if you're just on your own, it's, it might get a bit I <laughs> daunting. <laughs> So, um, Postgres has been elected like uh, twice or, or three times already in a row, like the most uh, loved database uh, by the users of um, I think it is, uh, Stack Overflow. So, uh, the question is either two ways of answering. Once you have observed what happened in, in the community, why do you think that might be the reason that becomes the most loved uh, database? But you think that there are some key things that happens in the community. And if you don't know that answer, maybe why, why would you vote Postgres to be your most loved uh, database, like your personal opinion? So. I mean, I think uh, in general there is a certain um, sort of direction towards open source and transparency. I think everywhere, not necessarily only in, in the database world, but across like globally, people want to know more and want to be more in control of things and they do want transparency. I think that's one of the keys. Obviously it's free, so that's a plus. Um, but uh, then in a sense it's free, uh, as I read in one of the blogs I was reading, it's free not, in, not only in a sense that it's, you don't need to pay anything for it because at the end of the day sometimes you would need a vendor that you pay for, for um, and things like that. But it's free in a sense of freedom so it gives you a freedom of uh, like ch choosing different options that tech on a technical uh, level, but also on the community level that you can sort of be a part of. And those are open to anyone who wants to be sort of active within those things. And I think that's something that many people are interested in. Is there any more questions? No. So it will be time for the coffee break. The t-shirts uh, are now available on the left of the side of this room. So you're welcome to pick one if you have asked for one. And uh, we'll be back in uh, 15 or 20, 20 minutes, I think. This is it. So thank you again, Valeria, for your talk and thank your you. answers. Thank you.